Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and this is Chasing Legends. Welcome back to Chasing Legends. I'm Wayne Tuttle, your host once again. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bells, leave a comment if you want to, and uh, check out our website, www.legendsuperstitionmountains.com. Got everything there, bark notes, photographs, links to all the videos and stuff, so go to town. And thank you, thank you everyone for continuing to watch our videos, and it's just kind of a really cool thing that after several years, we continue just to keep that audience and continue to grow. So this week, we do another story. Now, I actually had two stories. Um, I had one, someone had mentioned the Wickenburg Stagecoach robbery. I have a rather, rather thick file on that, very familiar with the story. And I started to work into that. And then I pulled another folder and I found an interesting story concerning the Bradshaw Mountains. And I started going through it and I thought, well, that's kind of a neat one. And then there was one on the Billy Bueno Mine. And the Billy Bueno Mine story wasn't really much of a story. It was more of just, there wasn't a lost mine, anything attached to it. It just told the story of the Billy Bueno. I thought maybe that could be good another time, another day. But, And I'm going through this Bradshaw folder and then I find this one story and it doesn't really belong. And it, and it begins much earlier than these other stories and I found and I realized well what about this one and I pulled everything out and then I found that really interesting and everything else got put aside and I made a new folder specifically for this one story I think it had been kind of put in the folder it didn't really fit the region it didn't fit anything else in the folder but so I'll tell it today so we're gonna start in six or 1766 Altar in Sonora, Mexico. And there's been a lot of depredations and a lot of problems with the Mojave Indians north of there, up in would be southern Arizona. And so a company of Mexican soldiers is sent to kind of push these guys out of there because some of the settlements and missions in the area, there's a lot of problems. So they send this company, they work their way up and follow these Mojaves and through different fights and stuff trying to kind of eradicate the problem in the area, they end up up in the northern area of the Verde Valley. While in the area, what we've determined is roughly the Sycamore Creek area, they're working along and in a side canyon, they find a ledge of gold and silver. And it's very rich. It's a quartz outcropping. So they decide that it's rich enough that they're going to leave a group of six soldiers there with two pack supply burrows with pack supplies and for them to spend several months there and get what they can and then they'll return and back to mexico with what they have and then they'll send a larger group up and that's the plan at the time so the groups part ways well these guys don't have an easy time of it it starts off initially well um they build an arastra there's a, there's a little ledged cave, um, kind of not a, not a deep cave, but a shallow cave area has a, has a ledge over it. And they set up camp in there, and then they build an arastra nearby. And then just a little ways from that, they build a smelter, um, an adobe smelter to start so they can make some the gold bars out of what they get. And it goes along very well, except for one problem. The Mojave's in the area keep attacking them they one of the things they're doing is rolling rocks over the ledge into their camp and stuff so they persevere um it's really difficult for them but the six soldiers do survive that and they eventually realize they have a number of these gold bars and stuff but the indians are getting just a little too much to handle so they decide that spring before summer is going to come they're going to get out of there um, before there's lack of water in the, in the canyons and so forth. So they'll pack up, take the burrows, get that stuff, and get out of there. So they go to get out, and the area they go out, there's a choke in the canyon, very narrow passage. And as they're leaving, the six are leaving with the two burrows trailing with them, um, the Mojaves attack them. 
and they kill four of the soldiers. Only two guys are left. Um, they get back to the shelter area and with their fallen comrades and they're just like, well, what do we do, you know? So they make the decision. They bury their, bury their um, fellow soldiers. Um, they take the supplies, the gold bars and everything and what they can't carry. They basically put it in the cave and, and throw dirt and rocks up in the cave to kind of deter any activity near it. Um, figuring that the Mojaves are more importantly want them just gone. And then they take the two pack mules and they decide they're going to ride those out. And they do ride out. It takes them 10 days and they get to Tubac. They get into Tubac. Um, they got a few of the gold bars. They're like, hey, we, you know, this mine. The rest of the stuff's there. We were attacked. Four soldiers were killed. The two of us are surviving. But they get to Tubac just when um, the president of Spain, the king of Spain, basically decides to remove all the Jesuits. The Jesuits are to be arrested and all the missions shut down and all this. And these guys come right in and all this activity happening. And they're like, what? And now they can't go back. They actually get put in charge of helping to move the Jesuits into the prisons and jails and stuff because the Jesuits are arrested at the time. And they get involved in that. It takes them several years before they get back into Mexico City, but even still being career soldiers, they're never able to get back to Arizona and get back to this spot to recover what they left behind and everything. But they leave maps and material. Um, turn ahead to the 1940s around the World War II era, and there's individuals named Paco. They don't give his last name. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. And his relative, he, he was a descendant of the gentleman, one of the two survivors of that. And he had an old, old map. And he got some friends together and was like, hey, well, let's go look for this. You know, they lived in Arizona. So a group of them, I think there were seven or eight of them, decided to make some trips up to look for it. One of the problems is the map was very old. Um, it did reference certain things in areas, but it had no place names. So they were able to kind of understand kind of maybe where it was, and but they tried to work it on maps and kind of see where it would fit. They had enough clues of a choke in the canyon and a gap and a dip, which they thought was maybe a waterfall before you get up there. They knew the story of the ledge, the little cave with the ledge, and they knew their raster was nearby and the smelter. So they knew there was enough material there to go with that if they located it, they would know they found it, but it was very difficult. Plus distances, they said everything was kind of very vague. So they spent five or six years before finally just kind of giving up, realizing there's so many canyons up in there and it's a tributary. They said we kept going up and down and going through and we never really found anything that we thought we were even close. And so they all just decided that was enough. And uh, Paco ended up disappearing. Um, he was drafted, actually, he didn't disappear. He went to New Guinea and he was killed in World War II. And so World War II and everything that was happening at the time kind of interfered with this. Well, after the war, there was a gentleman, there was a, there was a dude ranch up there. I think it's called La Loma, up near Sedona, Cave Creek, or Carefree, um, up in Carefree in that area. So he was up there, and he went in, and there was a group of them going through the canyon, like a hiking group, and he had his camera and he was taking pictures and he found some neat interesting things he wanted to take pictures of and he kind of wandered off and then got turned around and couldn't figure out where the group was and called out and he realized he must have gotten way too far and couldn't hear them so he kept trying to backtrack and then kind of figuring out where he was going but as he went he kept taking pictures of stuff and then finally he ended up they searched for him they realized once they got back he was missing they went back out, couldn't find him. He ended up 30 miles away, three days later, um, coming out in Perkinsville. So they went back and everything with him and brought him back and he had all these pictures and he said it was kind of his fault and all, it was no big deal. And then the newspaper started public pictures. But one of the problems in the local newspapers, one of the pictures shows an Indian ruin he found. And there was kind of a little bit of talk of like, that's pretty cool. He found some old ruins. He didn't know really where anything was, but the ruin is alleged cave. And you can see in the background an Arastra. And this of course excited the remaining members of that group who wanted to go back out and look for it. 
And again, they went back out, but the problem is the guy had no idea where he was. Again, he was just some guy who was out on a dude ranch, ended up on a hike getting lost, and he came across this after he'd been just wandering around back and forth and around, and he couldn't even put anybody in the general vicinity. He went out several times, and they said the further they went out, the more confused he got, because it just all looked the same to him and all. So the group searched for many years. Um, they said there was a point where nobody was really searching for it and everybody blew it off. But they said there was the photograph. And the photograph fit everything to a T to where this ledge was and all that was in the arrestor in the background. So they said it actually was a very true treasure story. But no one that I know of so far has been able to relocate it. So it's a very interesting lost Spanish mine up in the Verde Valley. So if you're up in that area and you're tooling around, you see a little cave that has a ledge above it, and then you look over and you see an arastra, and then you find the remains of an adobe furnace, you'll realize you're there, dig in the back of that cave, and chances are you're going to be very wealthy after that. Um, also nearby would be the burial of the Spanish soldiers, which I would love to be. So that's the story of that. Um, I found it interesting, much different than the others. I was able to research enough of it to realize there was newspaper accounts of the guy that was got lost and so forth like that. And that's the stories I like, where you got enough of something that kind of pulls that story further along. So going from 1766 and then basically up into the World War II area and even present day that I've not heard of anyone who's found those ledges. And I've heard people talk about it. Um, the woman that wrote one of the articles did say that there was a number of maps out there. Um, she didn't know who had them or how they'd gotten out. But she said none of them matched what Paco had. She said they were they were all in Spanish, um, but they looked like they'd been tracings or copies or someone had looked at Paco's and tried to copy some of it. She said none of them had the same verbiage on them, which was all in Spanish. And she said none of them ever didn't look like what he had had. So Paco's map, who knows what happened to that. But as far as she said, the five or six that she ever saw, never match that map so chances anything in the public domain doesn't match Paco's maybe if we find Paco's family but chances are it's just lost a time at this point so there you go lost ledge there's probably plenty of gold still there there's the gold bars in the cave and who knows with pretty historical nice little kind of deal so that's a good story I think for this week as we continue to chase legends as we further go along um, stay with us. We got lots more. We're going to kind of work ourselves back into the superstitions in some of the areas. I'm trying to let the personal story sit for a while, kind of maybe get into a few mysteries and stuff. But again, it's, it's kind of what catches my ear. And I think the last couple have done really well by me just kind of digging in the files and saying, you know what, that kind of, is, that's an interesting story. So, and, and there are more to come. I, I do take what people say. I go through the files and I listen and I kind of go, hmm, you know what, I'll look at that. And I start reading across it. And the ones that I feel work for 10, 15, 20 minutes, those are the nice ones. Uh, maybe we expand on those in other times. So there we go. Well, hope everybody's enjoying the weather. The weather's about to turn for us. Um, we're going to be up into the 90s this week and it looks like summertime's here. So that's getting to the end of the trail. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I know a few people were up in the mountains. A few people are trying to plan some trips. Be very careful because this is the time of the year the rattlesnakes are out, the heat's out there, the water's drying up. It's a difficult and kind of like a, a rough time to go if you're not used to it. So there you go. I hope everybody enjoys an awesome week. And always remember, I'm Wayne Tuttle. You're not. This was Chasing Legends.